Hey Gemini, welcome to 2022. Happy New Year. Happy January. I do hope that this video finds you well and in good spirits. And if not, I am sending you all the more love and positivity your way. I actually have all of your cards out on the table here. And I know the astrology this month is pretty rocky and kind of some turbulence right out the gate into the new year. And especially for you, Gemini, being ruled by Mercury, uh, we do have a Mercury retrograde this month, and that could feel really unsafe settling for you. Um, there's actually a lot that has been going on for you in the past year and a half with the North Node in your sign. There's been a lot of identity searching and figuring out who you really are, and you might be wrapping up some of these themes this month. I would actually say that January overall is about perspective, and I'm kind of seeing this with the card right at the bottom of the deck here, this Two of Wands. It feels like this is a year for you to really gain perspective. If you are actually curious um, what the year has in store for you, I do have uh, the yearly horoscopes linked in my description box down below. You can find those uh, with the 2022 predictions. I have all 12 horoscopes available. Uh, I will be adapting those to short form media as well, so shorts and reels um, over the next couple of weeks. So keep your eyes open for those if you're interested. But again, it's all available in writing right now. I am also offering personal readings and Reiki sessions on my website at 15% off using the discount code New Year 2022. And I was saying, like, this year really is about perspective, but especially this month in particular. There's a lot of things where it's like, I, I think you're learning where to delegate your energy. Um, there's definitely been quite a bit of healing with the Queen of Cups and the Sun here. I'm looking at these two cards in the past, and this feels like it's about healing. Could be involving a Leo or potentially a Cancer, someone who's maybe on the cusp. Might also be Pisces or Scorpio with these two as well, or with the Queen of Cups, I should say. But really what this feels like to me is your emotions, who you are deep down, um, has become very illuminated for you. And I do see a lot of healing here, and maybe that hasn't always been easy. It might have been very challenging. And in fact, you're coming out of this period with the Ten of Wands, which is a, a lot of lessons, a lot of burdens, a lot of uh, responsibilities. And that's why I feel like you really need to delegate this month. And I know with um, Mercury entering into Aquarius right at the beginning of this month, there is this focus on maybe higher education or travel, anything worldly really. And there might be travel delays, there might be hiccups in that area of your life as well. And you really could be reviewing uh, kind of your worldviews in general, and maybe looking at the world in a different way, or assessing the way that you look at the world. All of that with the ninth house stuff uh, in Aquarius, and we are entering into Aquarius season as well, in the second half of January. And of course, again, um, that is co-occurring with the new moon in Capricorn, which is about your eighth house, your house of secrets, sexuality, death, transformation, debts, a, a lot of uh, things right there, I know. Um, kind of makes me think too, I know student loans are going to be starting up in the US or they're set to start up in February. I think that was already pushed back though, so maybe it'll be pushed back again. But I, I could potentially see how that might be something on your mind if you do have uh, loans or debts in uh, like that. Um, maybe that's just something that's kind of weighing on you. Um, but I, I feel like ultimately this period really is like... potentially you relating to yourself and, and relating to almost your subconscious or the things you've kept hidden in a different way. And I, I again, I see that with like the North Node shifting out of your sign and into uh, Taurus, your 12th house, which is your subconscious, your, your spirituality, your dream world. If the... Twelfth house is a subconscious, what we don't know. The eighth house is like the things we know that we don't know. It's also what we choose to keep secret, what we keep out of sight from other people. There's a lot of focus on kind of the hidden areas of your life and gaining different perspective there. And that's really going to be thematic um, for this month. I apologize if you can hear these weird sounds outside. If you can, they're uh, actually just snow plows. Um, sorry if that's disturbing to you. Um, but yeah, with, with the Ten of Wands here, 
It really is like simplifying. You've gone through a lot over the past couple of years, and now it's really like, what do I need to take care of and what can I just let go of or what can I give to someone else? That's really, really important. Um, and I think there is a lot of you just withdrawing or retreating and really getting back in touch with who you are. I see with the King of Swords here, uh, really a lot of strategy this month as well. You might be thinking about the bigger picture of your life in general, thinking about that with Capricorn season and thinking about that with Aquarius season. Um, there is kind of this focus on, you know, sort of the future, um, trying to figure out what's going to be worth your time or how you can achieve the things that you want to achieve, how you can achieve your long-term goals. Um, that's going to be really, really important for you. And there's actually kind of this thing with Pisces energy this year that's really having you focus on your career and, and purpose in a different way, too. Um, I do see the Three of Wands as a potential challenge or, or change for you. This does make me think there could be delays or changes in plans. There was something that you were expecting to come back, or, or maybe there's something that is still on its way and is delayed. There could be travel delays again. I could potentially see something like that. Um, and it, it's almost like you need to change your strategy here. I, I'm getting that kind of sense. Like, you might feel like you're playing a chess game this month, and it's like you need to think a few steps ahead, but then every time you do, it's like something changes. And I think that's why it's really important for you to kind of take a step back and let things unfold. It might take some time before things really become clear. And I know with Mercury being retrograde, it really could make things quite foggy for you. There could be things about secrets coming out, uh, secrets being revealed, especially when Mercury goes retrograde in Capricorn. That's potentially something that could happen. And most especially in February when it goes direct, there might be some reveals that happen, and they might not necessarily be super comfortable. Um, they might shake you up a little bit. And there's a lot that's been happening with the astrology that's really shaking up our sense of stability and security. And it almost feels like needing to give space to the unknown, letting things play out this month. I see with this King of Cups, it is like having this emotional composure or maturity. You're coming into this energy. And I, I don't even feel like this is necessarily another person. Maybe it is, but I, I feel like this is more you stepping into this energy or embodying this King of Cups for yourself. And I kind of see that with your animal cards I pulled for you too. You have the turtle and the unicorn. And the turtle really does remind me of this retreating, withdrawing, you know, recharging, reconnecting with this sense of home as well. And then with the unicorn, it is really about tapping into your intuition and the third eye in particular, because the unicorn represents the third eye in this animal spirit deck. Uh, it's kind of this horn that's reaching and piercing into the veil. You do have access to a lot of intuitive information right now, and that actually can happen during Mercury retrogrades. It's like the left brain kind of goes awry, but then things with the right creative, intuitive brain uh, really can come through. It just might take some time to integrate all of that information. And I think that's why you have the Two of Wands here again at the bottom of the deck. There really is this focus on, on gaining perspective, seeing things from a different way. I actually want to pull one more card for you. I'm just curious to see if there's anything else we have for Gemini. Ooh, that's way too many. Sorry, one sec here. And this is why I have been drawing the cards before I hit record. Okay, let's try that again. A lot of messages. Maybe it does feel like everything is just happening all at once. And there is delays. Um, and it's really kind of testing your patience here. Queen of Swords. Yeah, there is this need to really get, gain clarity. 
and to see things really crystal clear. And your emotions might be making that hard. And it's important to really recognize how your emotions could be influencing your thoughts and vice versa. I could potentially see that too. Um, but just this relationship between emotions and thoughts and how that might be affecting your perceptions. And even if you're having like intense emotions come up to you or intense thoughts, disturbing thoughts, just, I almost want you to like narrate what those things are. Like I'm thinking the thought that I'm a failure. Because often when we do that, we, we actually see that thought in a way where we are recognizing that it's happening. We're owning that it's happening, but there's also removing ourself from it by observing it, almost in like a third person sort of way, or, or I guess it is still technically first person, but it, it puts a framework around the thought where it's no longer something that you're just drowning in or immersed in. Let me clearly, what do we have for Gemini? Why is the Queen of Swords here? Two of Swords. Yeah, this is all about strategy and, and needing to take your time. Don't feel like you need to rush a decision. And in fact, the more you try to rush this month, Gemini, the, the harder things could be. Um, this really is a month that feels like a lot of your perceptions are being challenged. And a lot of things are shifting. There really is this focus on your subconscious and the beliefs that you don't even recognize you have or the expectations you don't even realize you have and sorting through all of these. Things might not make sense right away. And it might feel like communication is something that's very challenging this month. It might feel like you have a hard time getting your point across or seeing things clearly. And I know Mercury will form a conjunction with Pluto on the 28th in Capricorn. And again, that could really be this profound period of transformation for you. It could signify certain endings taking place. I did see the tower card actually flash uh, a couple times while I was shuffling. Um, so there may be some sort of ending or there may be things that are, are coming to a close, chapters that are coming to a close, which makes sense with the nodes shifting. Um, it really is like the close of a chapter uh, the last 18 months as we step into a new cycle uh, for the next 18 months with these eclipses now occurring in Taurus and Scorpio. Um, those are going to be happening later this year, but we already had that uh, Taurus eclipse, um, which might have already stirred up some things in your subconscious and is kind of like, oh, hey, I need to take care of my mental health or I, I need to really figure out who I am deep down or why I am the way I am. That's going to be really, really thematic for you. And this whole year is going to be about rejuvenating, taking time and space for yourself. And that might mean um, getting off of social media. That might mean giving yourself breaks from your phone, um, really connecting with yourself, not distracting yourself from things, really going within as this turtle energy. And those are all the messages I have for you this month. Uh, Gemini, I do hope that this was useful for you. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. All of my links are in the description box down below. Again, I have a sale for 15% off on all of my services until January 8th. Um, so if you miss the holiday sale, it's a great time to book with me. Uh, I do also have a link for the 2022 forecast um, and all those horoscopes and predictions are available as well. And finally, if you feel so called to donate, I'm actually directing everyone on my channel this month to my friend Angela, who is creating an Enneagram reflection deck. Uh, she actually has a Kickstarter for that. 
So if you want to donate, I, I highly encourage that. I'm sure she would really, really appreciate it. The Enneagram is actually a really great way to figure out what your basic drives and fears are, the ways you may sabotage yourself and the ways you can grow. And actually for you specifically, Gemini, the Enneagram could be a really useful tool. So maybe learning about that and checking out that reflection deck could actually be really, really useful. Um, I hope that was all helpful. I will see you all in the next video and I'm wishing you a very happy January.